having more than what the MTO calls for in a scout platoon in terms of men and equipment. The FSV designers must also deal with the biggest dilemma of the Gulf War, fratricide. Of all friendly vehicles in our task force, my scout platoon most closely resembled the enemy because of two reasons. One, the positioning of my platoon forward and on the flanks of the unit, and two, the enemy also had M113 light vehicles. Our unit attempted several solutions to the fratricide problem. We tried using the aircraft panel markers for day recognition and thermalized number 10 coffee cans on our antennas for night recognition, but both were only mildly effective because of the general field conditions. Their ineffectiveness was particularly evident during one fog of war incident which occurred on 27 February 1991. Up until this day, my platoon had been the only force on the brigade's left and northern flank since the start of the ground war. On 27 February, however, the brigade commander moved the mechanized infantry task force to the left flank for further security. He swung them around in a wide arc at approximately 45 degrees at a distance of 3,000 meters to ensure that the infantry task force did not become entangled with my task force. As the mechanized infantry task force's right flank tank company team oriented towards our M1A1 flot, one of the tank gunners immediately identified and blazed a column of enemy vehicles moving in front of the northeast toward my task force M1A1 flot. The tank commander, who was also the platoon leader, looked through the gunner's primary sight extension and identified the vehicles as definitely moving towards the friendly flot, but could not confirm them as friendly or enemy. After calling the spot report in and closing into a distance of 1,000 meters toward our M1A1 flot, the platoon leader was able to identify the vehicles as friendly. What both him and his gunner had seen was my scout platoon in an echelon left moving off the left flank of our M1A1 flot. This was not apparent to either soldier because of our movement formations and our indistinguishable vehicle form and our lack of an easily identifiable friendly identification system. Other studies have proven the Desert Storm made fratricide more probable because of our lack of good identification of friendly force IFF markings and the distances at which we were engaging perceived enemy vehicles. Undoubtedly, the FSV must go forward with some system of IFF marking. The Army wants a, quote, ground scout vehicle that can penetrate undetected into areas under enemy control, unquote, during both, quote, forward deployed and contingency area operations, unquote. To do so, the Army needs to make that vehicle light, mobile, and survivable. Survivability will depend on its ability to sustain operations independent of immediate task force support, escape enemy detection, and distinguish itself from enemy vehicles in the form of an IFF system. Based on my Desert Storm experiences as a task force scout platoon leader, I endorse, with some additions, the Army's current direction it's heading with the future scout vehicle. Notes 1. Armor 2000 a balanced force for the Army of the Future, U.S. Army Armor Center, Fort Knox, Kentucky, 10 July 1990, page 14. 2. FM 17-98, Scout Platoon, Headquarters, Department of the Army, Washington, D.C., October 1987, page 2. 2, page 60. 3. FM 71-2, the Tank and Mechanized Infantry Battalion Task Force, 
Department of the Army, Washington, D.C., September 1988, pages 3 through 44. 4. I bid. 5. Armor 2000, page 14. Captain John Tien wrote this article based on his experience as the Task Force Scout Platoon Leader in 4th Battalion, 70th Armor, 2nd Brigade, 1st Armored Division, which fought in the Battle of Medina Ridge during Operation Desert Storm. He is a 1987 graduate of the U.S. Military Academy and received a degree in political science from Oxford University as a Rhodes Scholar. A graduate of the Army Officer Advanced Course, Armor Officer Basic Course, Airborne and French Commando Courses, he served as a tank platoon leader, scout platoon leader, and battalion adjutant for 470th Armor in Erlingen, Germany, and is currently assigned to the 2nd Armored Division at Fort Hood.